Welcome to Ultimate Doom Builder. This is map 01 of a project called The Army of Insanity by KHJ Doom 25. Uh, and I thought I'd do something a bit different this time. This was submitted to me uh, for feedback. Uh, so I thought that instead of just going through the map and pointing things out and saying this is how you could do things differently, uh, I thought I would go through and then gather some ideas and then show how to execute on those ideas by doing some editing myself and maybe redlining the map a bit and uh, just making suggestions live that way. Uh, I haven't got permission to do this or anything, so uh, this video might end up uh, being kept private, uh, but I thought it might be an interesting idea just to see uh, how my suggestions might work. Uh, here's the thing, I recorded an hour of video doing this, uh, and then discovered that throughout that hour my sound was not on. Uh, so I am now going to just narrate back through this video, uh, trying to remember what I said, and uh, everything will be absolutely fine, it's okay. Let's start off the map for a first playthrough. Alright, so we're starting off fascinatedly facing our monitor, and uh, there are some people in here who have slaughtered our uh, companions, but have decided that I'm too boring to pay attention to, <laughs> and I can just sneak past here. Uh, Alright, so there's a door. We need a blue card, but we don't have an indication on this door that there's a blue card needed to open it. So the only way to find that out is to go to the door and find that you can't open it. We're going to open this door instead, and we're confronted with a heap of enemies and a heap of barrels. But uh, the enemies are just going to... yeah, they're going to invite, they're going to blow themselves up. Very satisfying. Okay, let's finish him off. Now you can see from outside, I don't know if I uh, get it in the frame entirely. I remember the Medicus. The Medicus are really cute. I love those. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to face it, but uh, there's a little forest here of some lollipop trees. It's kind of crowded with uh, some uh, decorations, and there's a chainsaw up on the crate here, which is counted as a secret, although it's not really very secret, it's quite obvious to see it, and the roots do it very obvious, so that could do with some a bit more hiding. Blue key is the opposite, uh, it's hidden behind a tree where you really want that to be a goal for the player, uh, to be able to see. Uh, there, I just faced the building there, and uh, you can see the door kind of disappears into the sky, uh, like it's a void. Uh, there's another door here, but uh, it offers no reaction when you uh, try to open it. That one opens pretty quickly. You get the armor, that door opens, you kill the imp, and we're off to the second part of the level. Uh, so again, we've got a door here uh, that doesn't react to being pushed. Got a chain gunner. Little ladder up here. And we've got a potential exit, but that needs a yellow card to exit. Alright, so all the... this actually reminds me of uh, my first maps, where I was uh, using Greytall a lot, because I think it was the default uh, texture that was... <laughs> I think it was the default texture that was used in uh, Doomed or whatever I was using then. Surprise there, that's pretty good. Um, you want to ambush the player. Um, you could do with a bit more variety with the monsters in there. There's a lost soul, there's another lost soul. We're going to just grab the yellow key, and that's our ticket to the exit. We can finish off those pretty easily, and that is our exit switch. Alright, that was my play through the map. Now I'm going to do some things to, uh, I hope, just give some suggestions to make it better. Uh, I'm running this video at two times speed now, so it doesn't go on too long, because it went on for a very, very long time. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, see what the forest area looked like if it was expanded a bit, because it, it was a bit cramped, the enemies were... Uh, all standing right next to the entrance and you can finish them off very easily. Uh, making spaces bigger is a little bit difficult in the Doom engine, but uh, we'll do what we can. Now this, what I'm doing here is uh, putting a sector that's a border around the outside area, so that uh, we can have something that looks a bit more like uh, a, a cliff wall that doesn't align perfectly with the uh, base uh, ceiling. So. Raise the ceilings. I press tab there to turn off the rendering of the sky, because it's far less confusing to deal with skies when they're just uh, the default texture up there. 
Uh, the other thing that uh, Raising the Ceiling here does is that it gives us an opportunity to uh, make the facade of the base as well, so it doesn't look like the door is just disappearing into the sky. Um, so we're going to choose some uh, textures for some borders around the base. We're going to make the base uh, out of cement textures. I think I decided that uh, that doesn't work very well after all, so I'm just going back to my mainstay, the Support 3 texture. And if we're using the Support 3 texture, we need this to be 24 units wide so that it fits exactly. Alright, we're bringing down this so that we've got an overhang for the door. And that looks pretty good. I think I dithered around here uh, thinking what I could do with the step at the front. But uh, anyway, we fill, we fill this in uh, with some rock textures and now we've got a bit of a cliffy forest area. The trouble with this approach is that uh, the trees, the lollipop style trees which relied on the ceiling being there, don't really look as good like this. They look too tall and uh, if you wanted to keep them like that, the easiest way to do it is probably to use a 3D sector. Uh, but if you're working with the uh, vanilla or boom, you won't be able to do that. Alright, put some rocks up there, darkened it up, and we're going to move some trees up to the border. So that, uh, so that first of all, the play area is less cramped, and second, we've got some uh, out-of-bounds decoration, and it looks like it's going on and we're not hemmed in. Going to change the uh, lake, because uh, I think it's a bit spiky for uh, natural water. That could always be the result of me messing with it. Putting another tree there. And now we're going to move some of these barrels, because at the moment the enemies just uh, detonate them instantly. Which is quite fun, but uh, I just want to demonstrate how you might want to give the player an extra challenge by hiding some monsters behind trees. Uh, we're going to keep some of the barrels next to the entrance, so that uh, the player can use them to fend off some enemies if they approach them. Uh, but we're just going to balance them a bit more. For the blue key, we're going to try to make an area look important. We're going to do that by just expanding the west wall here. And we're going to build some natural-ish looking stairs, just not caring much about where we're landing our vertices. And we're going to finish it there. There's the blue key. Expand that again a bit, dot some trees around, and some guards for the blue key. We're going to put them on hard and make them ambush players. And we're going to expand this wall just a little as well, so that uh, they don't wake up when you come out the entrance. Alright, I apologise for the darkness here, but uh, we're going to change that. We're going to make this a set of steps. We're going to Make it slowly rise in brightness, so that the blue key is highlighted. And we're going to highlight it further by putting a couple of fire sticks around there as well. Alright, so I, li I do like the shadows beneath the trees here. That's a nice detail. Alright, uh, we're going to move indoors now, and we're going to do some things with ceilings and doors, I think. Yeah, the trouble with... Uh, the trouble with uh, working with textures that are 128 high is they look so neat when your ceiling and floor are 128 apart. But uh, as soon as you try to get clever, they so they sometimes break down a bit, so you have to compromise uh, on having interesting heights in your map versus having these uh, textures look good. Alright, so we've, uh, we've made an alcove for the door. We've split the door into three sectors instead of just one, so that we have room to make these uh, overhangs next to the door, so that it's not absolutely flush with the wall and it's not absolutely flush with the ceiling. Yeah, there's a there's a step up to the base. And we're going to give it a techy step texture. All right. Again, fiddle with the lighting, make it gradually get light of the base so that uh, the door is in a highlight. Right, I was just checking the door track textures on that, and that looks good. Alright, so now we're going to deal with the starting area, because having the player stare at a monitor to start off with isn't very interesting. So we're going to move this monitor away, and we're going to build another room to the north instead. We're going to build a wall up here. Bring that in a little. And we're going to move the player so that they're facing this way. 
and they've got a little bit of uh, leeway before the uh, encounter with the first enemies. And we're going to block sound so that uh, if the player, even if the player fires here, the enemies will be there to uh, ambush him when he comes out. So let's make this even a bit more interesting. Uh, we're going to add some stairs down, so we've got some uh, variation in the height of the map. We're going to take that uh, texture from outside. We're going to raise this monitor a bit, I think. Oh yeah, I'm j I was just uh, zooming around there, aligning the textures, deciding on uh, whether they looked good or not. We're going to add a little panel into this wall, uh, which is one of my favourite tricks. Uh, I think quite a lot of people might say I overuse panels, uh, just these little indented areas in the walls, uh, but they, they do break up walls quite nicely and add a little bit of interesting detail where there's usually just flat. Got a bit confused with my textures here because I'm not used to the uh, browser behaving like this for a default doom. <laughs> there we go. All right, brighten those up, and we should be okay. Now we're going to add some techno pillars to give the impression of this uh, sort of stately wood house that's been converted into a into a tech base of some sort. Going to replace those with lamps because they were ended up too tall for the area. Let's tempt the player over there with a couple of ammo clips. Now there's a little construction here, uh, which is uh, uh, some kind of wooden pillar or wardrobe or something. Just going to copy that a couple of times to make this new room a bit more interesting, and I think we're we're at a point where we've got uh, quite a nice little room here. Oh yeah, that desk. I do like that desk. It's a it's a nice little detail that breaks up the room. Just messing about with some lighting here again, uh, making the door look important by highlighting it. Uh, we're going to put uh, some more detail into this door, because it was a blue keycard door, there it is, uh, but we need some kind of indication that this door is openable by, with a blue keycard and not uh, just openable with anything. Door blue is the traditional choice here for doing that. We're going to move the desk over and uh, give this a little bit more border as well. Uh, then I decided that uh, we can even make it more interesting by indenting it. And there you go. Alright, another way you can make rooms interesting, just cut out a bit in the middle, lower it by a couple of uh, map units, let's put a little step there, and let's have a carpet. There you go. And equally, once you've got a sector there, you can raise the ceiling, you can put some panels around the ceiling. And it just, all these uh, height differences, uh, ins and outs to the walls, they they just make the room look a lot more interesting and less like a box. If you have enough boxes and enough shapes, uh, then you, you get some really quite satisfying effects from them. Oh yeah, so I noticed uh, we're in Doom uh, Default uh, or Boom or something, so we need to pay attention to where we're putting our floors. You can't realign floors in the uh, plain Doom engine. All right. Now this door here, uh, it just serves as really confusing to me, so I was just going to delete that door entirely and make it a hidden uh, entrance instead. That way the player doesn't see that door and think I should be able to get through there, and the, the surprise is preserved when it opens up. Now here I'm just checking that uh, it's a door like I think it is, and that it raises up, and then we can pay attention to the inside of this chamber instead. First of all, just expanding it a bit, making it uh, less tight, making it more of a little space rather than a tiny corridor. I'm going to edit this door so it's one of the big doors instead, and uh, one of the easiest ways to make something look more interesting is add some height difference to it. So we're going to add some stairs, with a bit of difficulty, but we are going to add them eventually. All right, and that's a 64 height uh, space, which means the player can still get into it, so uh, we're okay. Let's add a little panel to this wall as well. Use one of the uh, comp textures, I think. Uh, 
and we're going to add some uh, step textures to here as well. All right, and that could be a secret uh, if you wanted it to be, because uh, normally you don't want the player to be able to step onto, uh, up into your panels, but if they can, sometimes reward them. Now I was going to do a little row of monitors here, but I forgot that Doom 2 does not have the little row of monitors texture. Uh, that was uh, one of the really useful ones that they've removed from the Doom 1 texture set. So I'm just looking through, looking through, looking through, looking through. I don't find it, so uh, I'm just going to put in a tech wall instead, which looks uh, not really good, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so I would possibly ignore this bit of advice. Um, this area here, it's full of tight corridors, it could be made a lot more interesting by uh, just expanding them up and uh, giving the some of these places a different look from before. I've removed the armor there because uh, we've just got an armor from the other area, uh, and I replaced it with a chain gun to tempt the player over there. Uh, this surprise is pretty good, there's um, an interesting makeup of uh, difficulty levels here, that if you play on easy, only the front two rows will appear, if you play on hard, only the back two rows up here. Uh, sorry, the other way round. Easy, they're further away. Uh, and medium, the front and the back appear. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I moved the line that triggers this cupboard backwards uh, so that it doesn't happen after you've run past them. It happens when you're right in front of them. And I'm also uh, building a couple of new areas over here so that I can stuff some of these monsters in so that they attack you from both sides instead of all being on one side and uh, quite easily finished off. Alright, so now I want to copy this uh, kind of door arrangement and use it on the other side. Actually, they're going to take a couple more enemies away before I do. Uh, I think I changed some of these to imps or some other, yeah, some other monsters. To make it a bit less of a, a, a monotonous surprise. And of course, once you get past the wave of enemies, uh, you're going to want some rewards in those monster closets. Uh, we're going to set the lower unpegged flag on those before we make them secret doors. Okay, so I'm just fiddling with some of the textures over here now, uh, trying to make them consistent, uh, trying to make some of these areas a bit more interesting than using uh, straight up and down left and right lines. Oh yeah, we're going to put a light in here, because uh, again, variations in sector lighting can make things look a lot more interesting. So we're going to make that dark, make that dark, we're going to make this light look like it's illuminating the corridor diagonally. And there we go. We're also going to add some uh, floor height variation here. Because, like I said before, that's one of the easiest ways to make things look more interesting. I'm going to put these pa uh, platforms up above the height of the corridor. And we're, we're making sure that the texture and the lighting is consistent for that corner. Alright, so this is a kind of nothing area uh, just now because uh, it's just a straight corridor so we can we can put a little bit of a room here to make it distinct from the other areas. I'm going to add an alcove in the wall, going to construct some steps, going to make this a computer up here, and then we've got we've got a nice little uh, computer area that stands out from the rest, and we're going to put some imps there. Now, notice that I've accidentally made them stealth, uh, stealth imps. Uh, never do this. Uh, stealth monsters are terrible. I don't know. Maybe maybe you are some genius that's found a use for stealth monsters that isn't horribly annoying, and if you have, then I will not argue with you. You can use Comptol here. And slide that downwards. So we've got another alcove. Let's make it blink randomly. And I think I... oh yeah, so here's another one of the old mainstays. We're going to put a computer terminal in the roof as well. 
Uh, comp star one, I think. I can never remember when I'm uh, when I'm dragging textures up and down. I can never remember where they're drawn from or how they're going to react when I drag them up and down. And I always get it wrong. All right, so now I'm fiddling with the lighting again. Uh, I was going to put some lights on the underside of that. Uh, tea light doesn't really do it because uh, I'm again I'm stuck with the ceiling textures where they are. I can't realign them. That one looks a bit better, so I've just moved it over a bit. So now we've got some lighting in that room. I think I'm going to put my support textures there. There we go. And yeah, let's try using comp blue in this room. It's, kind of, it's not something I usually use, but... Uh, oh yeah, and you have to be careful of your alignment of your textures as well, because you can't do the upper and lower ones separately in Plain Doom. There, I've corrected the imps so they're actually imps now. And uh, now we've got our interesting little room. We've got uh, a doorway by lowering that ceiling. And we're going to move on to somewhere else. Okay, so now I'm uh, doing the entrance area. going to expand that in much the same way that I did uh, before. And we're going to change uh, the wall here so that there's, there's an interesting detail to look at. Uh, once again... Panels, absolutely magic. It's uh, my equivalent of uh, multi-density fiberboard. Uh, you can put it anywhere and it'll look great. All right. So, the because it's on the diagonal, the, those uh, struts don't quite fit, but uh, you'd have to be looking quite closely to notice. And we're going to make the back of this room a uh, tech wall. So once again, it's not just all grey, there are some border textures, support 3s, support 2s, and the walls change as you go around. Once again, uh, putting some lights in, putting some steps, doing some height variation. I hope this is uh, remotely decipherable, by the way, uh, in 2 times speed. I don't know if it is, but... Uh, I'll <laughs> I'll do my best to explain what's going on as I do it. I'm going to expand the yellow key room as well, because uh, just now there's nothing really that happens when you uh, when you get the yellow key. Uh, it's just a walk into the door that you uh, opened and then you grab the yellow key and then you go straight back out again. Again, splitting the door into three different sectors. Uh, the actual door part is in the middle. The uh, the alcoves on the either side of the door are uh, going to be around the outside, and I'm giving the door a bit more of an interesting sh uh, the room a bit more of an interesting shape as well. All right, yeah. One of the things that I did there that I just overlooked uh, is that I changed the pedestal the yellow key is on from that blue circle texture away to a different texture because you've used the blue circle texture to indicate that uh, there's a teleporter there. Uh, and I prefer being consistent and letting the player uh, roughly know what, just about what's going to happen when they step on the floor. You do want to give them some surprises, though. So, but but I think that having a teleporter there is just uh, unnecessary, or having something that looks like a teleporter there is just unnecessary. All right. So this door opened uh, quite by accident when I was playing the map. Uh, it looks like it happens just when you cross that line above. Uh, so I'm going to change that to a switch so that the player has to do something uh, more deliberate and they know they've done something to open a door around the corner. I'm going to change that so that it's an S1 op door open. There it is. It's a difficult feat to uh, remember what uh, actions you even have available in Base Doom, but uh, you've always got the parameterized ones in Boom. I, I, I'm always amazed that John Romero didn't think of that. And he just... Uh, sorry, John Carmack, even. I think. Maybe? I don't know. I, uh, but yeah. Uh, he's this genius who can write this uh, 3D fast engine that uh, nobody's ever done before, but uh, never got the idea that people are going to keep asking me to do a switch, then raise 32 remotely, then a switch range 64 remotely, and I should just uh, put, them in, put parameters on them. Alright, 
Adding some more things to uh, break up the grey walls here. Uh, we're going to edit this door once again. Make it so that we have the overhangs available around the outsides. Okay, yeah. Make sure these are aligned correctly and that the floor is uh, next to the floor and the ceiling's next to the ceiling. Uh, we're going to control a uh, shift R that to reset its uh, offsets. And we're going to do the same on the other side, maybe. No, maybe we're not. Now, I put the uh, door red texture here, uh, forgetting that this is actually a yellow door, not a red door, so obviously uh, don't mislead the player like that. Uh, that's an accident on my part. And we're going to create a set of stairs, again using some height variation to make the map a bit more interesting. Alright, let's move that down, move that down, move that down. Move all the floors down, move all the ceilings down. And we've got some space up there, let's stick another computer there. Alright. Going to change the floor here, make it look like a different part of the map. Uh, what did I do next? Okay, yeah, so just adding just a couple of items and enemies around to make things a bit more interesting and not give the player a break there. Now, I like using uh, tiny little bonuses. Uh, and peppering them around the map. Uh, other people might like using more significant bonuses and uh, not having so many of them, but I, I like the player to have this trail of things to collect and to uh, like, like a little Pac-Man. Alright, uh, it's back to the panel tricks again, adding some to the exit room. Exit rooms in the original Doom are pretty straightforward, honestly. So you don't need to do a whole lot to it if uh, that's what you're going for. Had some trouble here, here with alignment once again, because I realised I couldn't uh, do the upper and lower ones separately, so I used uh, doorstop as, as uh, borders. Same story over here, add one to the other side. Add some vertices so that we've got room to put our textures. Add the stones, and we've got our panel. Let's make them blink. And we're going to just make the room look a bit less square by uh, dragging some of the vertices around. And there we go. Oh yeah, you'll know what I'm doing by now. Little bit of uh, indent in the middle of the floor. Let's use the uh, classic E1M1 carpet. And a step, and we can put those up, and when there's going to be a comp over there, just paste that, that around, and uh, let's adjust that a bit so that, uh, that fits in. Uh, there's a bit around the ceiling that really doesn't, but I'm just going to take it on trust that nobody's really going to notice. Doors fixed, okay. And we're going to make the enemies hide around the corners instead of just being there in the middle of the room, uh, so that they have a little bit of a chance to ambush you. Oh yeah, I forgot about the chainsaw secret. Uh, I would hide it a bit better around the corner or something and make the entrance not quite so obvious. I'm putting a tree in front of it uh, to attempt to disguise it, but you might want to do a bit more. This thing that I'm deciding on now, I remember, because I wasn't sure whether teleports in Boom work on just the front side of lines if you cross them one way or if they work both ways. Uh, so I don't really like uh, points of no return in a map without really good uh, telegraphing of them. Uh, so I set up a teleporter that would send the player back to the old area if they stepped on this teleporter again. I was unsure on whether uh, adding the teleportation lines would just mean that the player collided with the backside of the lines and instantly teleported back as soon as they teleported there. Uh, fortunately, uh, boom works the way that I thought it did, and teleport lines only work when you cross them from the front side to the back side. 
So now we're back in the real world with me recording uh, both video and sound again, which is great. Uh, I just want to do a couple of things that I noticed I'd overlooked in that video. Uh, namely, that that's tag 4, that's tag 4, that's tag 4. Uh, what does this do? This is generalized door. Walk of 1, speed turbo, open only, monsters no, wait 30 seconds. I think that's okay. Um, Alright, and this here, I didn't change the edges of this door. Oh, and uh, I made these yellow uh, just before I started the video, so uh, that's all correct now. Alright then, um, shall we give it a go? Let's see what happens. All right, so we start in our uh, newly renovated uh, little room with the monitor, and we've got a chance to go over. And we can't, we can't avoid the uh, soldiers over here now. We look like we've uh, just taken a quick break uh, when the slaughter happened, and uh, now we're rescuing. Uh, who else remains? Um, we know that there's a blue door over there. Uh, Oh yeah, there were a couple of things uh, I forgot to mention. I really love the sound effects uh, that uh, you've added to this custom wad. And uh, I like the way that this door opens a little bit before you expect it to, because there's a, there's a line here that opens it, and you expect to have to open it yourself. Well, so here come... Here come the enemies through the forest. There's a lot of uh, cover to be had. Uh, uh, a lot of hiding places for monsters. Uh, this chainsaw secret, still not extremely secret to be honest. Uh, I, it's fairly visible, but uh, you, you can think of some other ways, maybe with some mid textures disguising it. I don't really know. And you can see that the forest looks a little bit uh, more like it's stretching off the edges of the map here, with the, uh, the cliff face being set back and the trees up there. Alright, looks like we've bought our way to the blue key. Uh, you know, mostly I, I talk about uh, Map's lack of generosity uh, for medikits. I think this might actually be too generous, uh, because there are loads of medikits around, but, you know, that, that's up to you. It's up to you uh, what uh, difficulty you want this to be. Alright, blue key gives us the armor. We've got our little uh, teleporter room. I was right at about the boom teleporters, uh, fortunately for me. They work as intended. Okay, so we're going to go over this way, and there's a door here. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do about that, because I would expect to be able to open that door just coming up to it. Not really sure. Uh, there's... There's a door that we know we need a yellow key for. And we can go up here, we can hit the switch. And we know something's happened over there, because we can hear it. One of the other things that I didn't have uh, time to do was, uh, instead of just grabbing the yellow key and going, you could have the yellow key visible on a ledge up there or something, and then have the player have to walk around and fight some monsters and then grab it. Uh, just so you're not uh, you're not just going into a room and immediately getting the yellow key and going back out again. They have to have something meaningful on the room. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Yep, that's working. There you go. And oh, there's some more of you as well. All right, so uh, <laughs> by somehow surprising myself <laughs> uh, with the trap that I knew I'd laid, uh, that creates a bit of panic. All right. Is that flickering? I've, I've never really known how the flicker texture works. I think it needs to be a different uh, light level from its surrounding textures. Alright, and there we go with the yellow door. Uh, here are some uh, combatants here. And we're at the end of the level. So yeah, that's just a brief tour of uh, some suggestions that I had for making the map a bit more interesting, taking it a bit further. But, you know, the, the bones are there. I do hope that this video has been useful and not, as I fear, fairly presumptuous and rude. Uh, so, yeah, you're welcome to you know use any of these suggestions, completely discard them and use your own, but uh, those are just some pointers I thought up. But thank you very much for submitting that for uh, feedback from me, and I hope this has been in some way useful. Goodbye.